Okay, so we are going to get started. Again, thank you for being here in our middle and high school math webinar with Formative. And before we dive in, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Lily Alvarez. I'm a client success manager. Um, and just to share a little bit about myself, I am a former architect and I'm also a former teacher. I used to teach innovation and design thinking. Um, I was a high school teacher. I'm also a cat owner, and actually my cat's name is the same name as the most famous architect of Barcelona, Gaudi. Um, and I love working mainly with international schools. That's what I do. I love working with international schools. Um, I think I get to learn a lot about how the education system works around the world. And for me, that's super exciting. Today, we will cover um, some really important features that we can find here informative and that will be very useful for you as math teachers. So the first one I want you to learn about is the latex shortcuts and the math keyboard. We will also learn how to use graphing questions, show your work, and we will learn more about embedded websites. These are very, very useful tools and you'll see why. Now let's dive in. And I'm actually gonna go into formative.com and I'm going to log in. I'm actually already logged in. So I'm just gonna click here in my math webinar formative. And the first thing we're going to learn how to use is a latex option. So when you use latex, you can add almost any math notation in formative, including multi-line equations, geometry, you can set builder notation and matrices. It's really, really good, it's super useful. So as you can see, I've already presented a short answer question here. And to get started, I'm going to add um, this latex code. Okay, so this is a prompt for my students. Find the center and radius of the circle represented by the equation. This is the equation I'm adding. Okay. Then I'm going to select the equation and you can see that the formatting menu comes up and then I'll click on latex over here. And as you can see, the yellow highlighted text is what students will see. So this yellow part is what the students will see. So let's actually go into the student preview to check how this will look for my students. I click here. And this is what my students are seeing. Okay, so it's exactly as a yellow highlighted text, which is, I think it's really wonderful. And now that we're in the student preview section, you know, you can actually click here to see the different ways your student will see this formative. If they were using a cell phone, they were using an iPad, or if they were using a computer. Okay, I'm gonna exit the previewing as a student, wonderful. So anywhere that you see our reach text box, latex can be used. This includes answer options like multiple choice, multiple selection, matching, resequence questions, and items in categories for categorized questions. So it's super useful. You can use it in a very, very various ways. Um, here in formatted. Okay, so now I have already presented this free response question because I really want to show you something that I really like. Okay, so I want my students to factor this equation. And I'm actually going to turn this into a latex. Here we go. And I will go again back to my student preview, go down. Okay, so I want my students to factor this equation. And actually I have already answered this. And so something great about this is that when you select this, you can see that again, your students can also respond using latex. So when I click here and when I'm reviewing the questions, you know, I'm actually gonna be able to see this. Now, another great, great option is um, 
you can use that the you can click here in the drop down plus sign and I click here and then I'm going to click on the math equation symbol so right here so you can see this is a menu for a mathematical keyword and you can also write by clicking here I can also write the response actually there we go so I can uh, minus four, then x minus three equals zero. Let's say done. And here's my equation. Okay, I'm gonna close the student preview. Please, I'm seeing your question. Is there any way to not have that equation out of public when math is chosen? No, this will always auto populate like that. Um, but your student, your student can always just click on the equation. When I should, I'm going to go in back again to proving as here. Your student can always go here. Um, I'm actually going to delete this. I'm going to remove this. And again, I'm going to remove this. So your students can always just click here, select, and delete the entire um, equation. Okay, we'll close the student preview. Now I will share a link here in the chat um, of an article that contains some pretty good tips and tricks um, about how to use Latex and some shortcuts that I think will be very helpful for you. Okay, there you go. So please take a look at it. I think it's super helpful. It contains lots of good shortcuts. Okay, so now we're gonna move on into graphing questions. So our graphing calculator is powered by Dismos, and I don't know if any one of you uses Dismos. So Dismos will enable your students to graph functions, plot data, evaluate equations, explore transformations, and much more. And to use our graphing question type, it's actually really easy. So just click here in the plus sign, and then here in the add question type from the blue icons, you're gonna click here on graphing. Okay. And it will prompt your, you can prompt your students to enter an expression or create a table to plot points. In this case, I'm going to ask my students to graph a line that is perpendicular to the line I'm going to use this one. And goes through point, say, 2, comma 1. I will also tell my students that they will need to figure out the equation to type it in below. Okay, should I make this a latex? So I really like it. Great. And now I will also enable here show your work, which actually show your work allows students to draw, type, underline, and even upload images. Here, for, for example, I want to edit the background of the board, the white roof of my students. Um, because I actually want to add some graphing paper for them so that it's easier for them to graph. So I'm gonna click here in image. And I don't really have a picture right now in my computer with the graphing paper. Something great about formative and about this um, feature is that you can actually look for graphing paper directly online in Google Images. So I'm gonna paper. Let's see. Okay, I like this one. So I will add this image. And I think this is pretty big, so I'm actually going to make this smaller. And I want this to be horizontal. So okay, there we go. And I'll say yes, great. So now I'm going to go to my student preview because I want to see how my students are seeing this question. So we are in question number three. And this is exactly what my students can see. Okay, 
So my students can do various things here. And this is something I really like. So my students can graph. That's 10. Okay, so this is great. Then my students can also insert the table. Let's say I'm going to do, okay, so I don't really know <laughs> what I am um, graphing here, but if you see, you, you, you know, if you put the cursor right here, students can actually see more details here in the graph, right? You can see the intersections. What if I want my students to, um, you know, I want my students to write another expression. And let's see, let's say I want my students to use the keypad. They can actually use it, this calculator to solve. You can actually add functions. And now let's go to show your work. So you can see how this looks for the students. So this is a graphing paper, paper that I added before. So my students can actually, and I'm just gonna, you know, just gonna write whatever times three equals five. Okay. What about um, if my student is actually solving this um, in in his or her no, notebook? Well, actually, students can click here. You see the features that the students and the teacher share here in the um, in this feature in this tool is exactly the same. So okay, let's say like my student is is solving this in a paper, and they want to take a photo of it. So I'm actually going to show you. I'm going to take a picture of myself, and let's see. You're going to see my beautiful face here. Now add it here, I'm gonna make it much smaller. I don't want it to take. And there we go. You can add a picture. You can also add, um, let's see, x plus, x, sorry, plus two equals 10. I can add math and move it around. I'm gonna make it smaller and make it bigger. I could change the color if I don't like pink. I like a different color. I want to ch change the thickness of it. Okay, I can also add a rectangle because perhaps this is my response. I want my teacher to know this is my response. Perhaps I want to delete something. So I go here, I click this, and I can delete whatever I select. Something really great is that, the, is that this whiteboard is infinite. So I can zoom out. And so I have more space to do things, write things, or you know, perhaps I want to do this picture bigger. And I can actually zoom in. So this is very, very useful for your students. And again, remember, you can see the different views of your students, the previews of your students. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And now, um, okay, now I want to show you something, a feature that is really, really good. It's, it's, I really like that as well. Um, and we're going to learn how to embed websites. Okay, so I'm going to click here in the plus sign. I'm going to click embed. And this will be prompted. Okay. So I know that a lot of middle school and high school teachers like to use websites and some web tools like GeoGebra. And a great thing here in Formative is that you can actually add GeoGebra to your formatives. So students will not have to leave the formative and go to this other web app. So we do this by embedding a website. And now we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so... Let's say I'm working on linear systems, linear equations with my students, and that I want to add this to my, to my formative. So I'm gonna copy this, and then I'll go to this other tool, 
called iframe generator and we can share these links with you as well um, we're going to be sharing some articles with with these links so you can actually try it yourself i'm going to copy here an iframe url i'm going to copy it paste the url sorry and then i'll click generate then i'll copy this and i'm going to go back to my formative and here i'll paste it Okay, so this is really, really cool. And you can see how we are seeing exactly the same as in here. All the features are here, just like if you were in GeoGebra. So you can use this tool, the embed website tool with many other websites. And also in the article we'll be sharing, we have some suggestions for you to use. Okay, so I don't want my students to just, you know, to just have this. I, I actually want to give my students some instructions and I haven't added any instructions here. So another great thing is that you can actually add instructions in here. I'm gonna add instructions by actually um, recording something because I want my students to listen to it just to make it, you know, a little bit more fun or to accommodate students. So, I'll use an audio, I click here, and I'm gonna tell my students, please solve the linear equations below. Don't forget to show your work. Stop recording. Probably that was, okay. And let's see how it sounds. Please solve the linear equations below. Don't forget to show your work. Okay, so I'm going to add that audio. Wonderful. So yeah, so my students can go here and can click and they will listen to instructions. Okay. And I also want my students to, I want to add a free response for my students. Okay, so they can answer freely. Okay, and I want them to show their work. So I'll title it this, and I want them to show their work. Okay, so as you can see, this is a great tool to, you know, add a, a web app you like to use. So your students will not have to go out from the formative and come back. You can add audio, you can add a free response, you can add so many things and have this really complete question for hearing your formative for your students. Okay, so those are the different um, features that I wanted to show you today. I don't know if anyone else has any other question. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. And actually, I'm going to share another really wonderful article in the chat with some tips for math teachers. And this is something that has a lot of different tricks so please take a look at it. Another really helpful thing here is that you can actually tag standards into your questions. So it's very easy to just click here, tag stand, you just click here, and you can add whatever standards you have. So let's say, I know this doesn't correspond to this question, but let's say I want this to be one of my standards. Let's say I want this other one, understand vectors and matrices assistance. So I can actually add the standards under the questions. You will need to add the standards, tag the standards per question. You can always copy them. Sorry, you, you can just, sorry, not copy them. You can um, add the, the, the standards in here. You have Marianne ask a question, what is the function of the standards? Yes, so the standards help teacher track student mastery along state or school standards, and that's also in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. So it seems like we don't have any other questions. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.